Hey guys, Miss Marissa here, and in this video we're going to be looking at pressure and making conversions within pressure units. Um, it does give us a definition for pressure on the page. It says pressure is defined as force divided by area, so basically how much stuff is pressing on a particular amount of area. And you're not going to really have to convert with that particular formula in chemistry. You'll be more calculating with that formula when you get to physics. Now. We have two types of equipment that can record uh, particular pressures. The first of those is what is called a barometer. Now, if you've ever watched the news and the weather, they've probably talked on there about the barometric pressure. And that's because it's the how much air is pressing outside. And sometimes when the barometric pressure changes, that can indicate that some uh, weather system is moving in or moving out. Uh, you notice on here a picture of an old school barometer. This is actually a mercury thermometer, which sounds kind of scary now because we know mercury is bad for us. But basically what they had was a bowl of mercury. And mercury, being a really dense liquid, responds pretty well to changes um, in pressure. So what would happen is that the air pressure would press down on the mercury and as it pressed more the mercury would rise up in this measurement tube and so literally they can measure millimeters of mercury rising in this tube now later barometers look something kind of like this okay there we go um, so this is another example of a barometer still again old school most of the barometers now are electronic and give us a lot more precise results than something like this one um, our other piece of equipment that we can use to measure uh, pressure that's happening inside of some sort of reaction is what is called a manometer. And a lot of manometers now are also electronic. Um, and they, again, if you had some sort of like closed container and you wanted to measure the pressure inside of there, you could use some sort of pro manometer in order to be able to do that. Now let's talk about pressure units and conversion. So you notice here it gives us five uh, particular units that we could convert between for pressures. And you might notice that two of them almost look kind of the same. You notice the 760 millimeters of mercury and 760 tor have the same number, meaning those two scales are actually the same. Now let me talk about why. We just talked about that mercury barometer back up here, right? Well, Torricelli was one of the major influences on this particular barometer. And so some people decided that they wanted to name the unit Tor after Torricelli. Well, there were already people using millimeters of mercury because that's what they were measuring in the tube. And so, you know, we kind of ended up with both units, which is annoying, but it makes it easy to convert between those two scales. Now, since we've done all kinds of complicated dimensional analysis, this becomes really easy dimensional analysis for us. So we're going to have a piece of cake trying to calculate these now that we've done complicated ones. So let's look at the first guy here. It wants us to convert 121.45 kPa's to tors. So I'm going to start off my dimensional analysis like I always do. How many tors are in 121.45 kPa? Okay, so what I would do is I would go find where KPA and TOR are in these conversions up above. So I see there's TOR, there's KPA. So now I know the two units I'm converting between. And so all this is going to take is one setup to convert between these two. Since KPA is on top, I would put KPA on the bottom. And I want to get this into TOR, so I need it on top in my next step. Okay. So now I just look at my conversions that are given up here. And by the way, these are on your formula chart. You don't have to memorize them. We like that. We just have to know how to use them. And I look to see what numbers go along with those units. So 760 went along with TOR. And 101.33 went along with KPA. So now I'm ready to plug this into my calculator. Now right now my calculator is in scientific notation and you can leave it in scientific notation or you can put it in standard notation. Again, we don't have a preference how this is reported. So I'm going to put in my 121.45, open up my parentheses, and then put in my next part of 760 divided by 101.33. Close, hit enter. And there's my answer in scientific notation. And I looks like I want to report one, two, three, four, five sig figs. So I can either put 9.109, .9, and it looks like that four wouldn't round up to zero, so we'll just leave it as zero. 
So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 10 to the 2. Or if I want to put this into standard mode, into flow mode, I could report this as 9, 10.90. That also shows five sig figs. And then I would put my unit of tor with it. Ta-da! Easy peasy, right? Now let's do one more together. The next one says, how many millimeters of mercury are there in 1.159 times 10 to the fourth pascals? So I would start off putting how many millimeters of mercury are there in 1.159 times 10 to the fourth pascals? Now you notice that pascals is not on our conversion chart. We have kilopascals, but we don't have pascals. So what that means is what we need to do first is we need to do a metric conversion with this, okay? So now that we've done that, this is gonna be a piece of cake, okay? We're gonna have pascals on the bottom and kPa on top so that way we can get the pascals to cancel each other out. Uh, one goes with the prefix, so I'm gonna put one with kilo, and then I know kilo scientific notation equivalent is one times 10 to the third. Okay, so that's in kilopascals, now great. I can use this kilopascals, and I wanna get this into millimeters of mercury. Now you notice these two conversions aren't right next to each other, but that's okay, these conversions don't have to be next to each other. You just use whichever two you need. So like, if you're in atmospheres and you're trying to get to PSI, you don't have to step through each of these individually. That is not necessary. You can literally just get straight from atmospheres into PSI. It makes it nice and easy. So I'm gonna do this for my two conversions that I wanna use, okay? I've got the kilopascals and millimeters of mercury. I need the kilopascals, by the way, to go on bottom since it's on top here. So I'm gonna put my 101.33 kPa down below, and I'm gonna put my 760 millimeters of mercury on top. All right, so now I'm ready to plug this bad boy into my calculator. So I'm gonna bust that out here. Okay, ooh, I'm getting some glare here. Let's try not to get some glare. All right, so I'm gonna plug in my numbers, 1.15 second e to the fourth, okay? I'm gonna open parentheses, one divided by one second e to the third, close my parentheses, and then I'm gonna do the last one of 760 divided by 101.33. Close my parentheses, hit enter, and there's my number. And it looks like my original number had three sig figs, so I wanna show three sig figs here. And you notice that it does have a five in the fourth place, so that would round up the two, giving us 86.3. And then as far as a unit is concerned, I would be left with, once everything else canceled out, my millimeters of mercury. So you can see, doing our metric system conversions, we can combine that with these pressure conversions. They're not hard to do. I'm gonna let y'all try out number 30, and I will see y'all in class. Bye, guys.